Hi friends, welcome to my channel Oxtoshomic. So today we will discuss about the service discovery pattern and how Eureka servers implement that service discovery pattern and, and we will see that how this service discovery pattern works. So take away from this session would be what is the service discovery pattern. So difference between the traditional server side load balancer and service discovery pattern and how to use the service discovery pattern in microservice. So let's first understand that what is service discovery pattern. So before understand that service discovery pattern, so there is two very important principle of the microservice is one that microservice should not allow any single point of failure and it should be 100% up. So what I mean by the single point of failure is that for any given moment, one instance of a service goes down, uh, then whole microservice architecture should not be affected by this. So there should be such mechanism where each microservice should have multiple instances. So if one or two instances goes down, it does not affect uh, the whole microservice architecture and the whole architecture should not be a uh, failure. So it can be a partial failure, but it should not be a total failure. So and another thing is that 100% uptime. The 100% uptime means that in production services should be 100% up. There should be a partial failure. One or two services may be unresponsive, but it's, it doesn't mean that whole application should be unresponsive. So it should be 100% up all the time and you cannot offer a single minute where you need to stop that whole architecture, uh, means whole uh, artifacts in production and you deploy a new artifacts or you need to do some properties change in the production so that is not allowed in the microservice architecture microservice architecture should be 100 percent up so to achieve these two principles we need to think carefully and we need to get the help of the horizontal scaling what the horizontal scaling says that for a particular service it can have a multiple instances and based on the load it can increases the uh, instances of an uh, service or when there is a few load it will be de decrease the instances of a particular microservice and it should be on the fly means for doing increasing or decreasing they there should not be any manual intervention or you need to stop the server or something so service uh, discovery patterns actually implement these things uh, so it's it's uh, maintains a dynamic registry so when our instances added it will be automatically added to that registry if the in instances is deleted it automatically removed from that registry service discovery pattern makes sure that this adding and removing uh, the registry will be up to date with the what are the instances is up and what are the instances with down but in traditional load balancing architecture, there is some demerits. The problem is that each uh, traditional architecture maintains internally a IP table, which IP table actually uh, provide the internal IPs of the all the server which are in the load balancing pool. So, and when a request comes to load balancer, load balancer decides that which server has less load and it forwards that request to that particular load. So in a given moment of time, if the load increases, you need to increase the instances. So you need to stop that load balancer. You need to update that IP table. Again, you need to start that load balancer. But as I said earlier in microservices, we cannot offer a downtime to increase increase the instances or decrease the instances you cannot stop the load balancer so that's why the traditional load balancer is not a good fit for microservice architecture for microservice architecture that's why we opt for the support the service discovery mechanism so here i am showing you how the traditional uh, load balancer works when a browser request request first interdicts with the load balancer and load balancer has this own uh, algorithm so based on the algorithm it identifies that which server is uh, has few load and forwards that load to that particular server but in a given moment say server b is down if the server b is down and load balancer identifies that that particular server b has less load and forwards that request to server b then you can get a failure result so 
you cannot totally rely on the load balancer because it cannot uh, run time remove that server b instances from its load balancing table so you can face a intermittent failure which is a very bad experience for user now let's see how server-side discovery pattern works so uh, we all know that uh, one of the implementations of the server-side discovery pattern is eureka and also right now we are uh, moving towards console so console also a uh, implementation of the server-side discovery pattern so how server-side discovery pattern works now server-side discovery pattern maintains a dynamic registry as i said so each instances this will register itself into that particular dynamic registry but dynamic registry is kind of a map of structure where there is a logical name of the service so when you are doing the coding probably you have been seen that uh, there is a spring dot application that properties where you need to mention a name so that name is the logical name of that service and eureka server treats that name as an key of the map and all the instances would be tagged against that particular key so in that way service registry always maintains all the things of a particular service now each instances for a certain frequent amount of time uh, uh, it sends a signal to your registry that hey i am alive so it's called the heartbeat so there should be a certain time limit within this time limit if that eureka server does not receive any heartbeat from a particular instance then it treats that that instance will goes down so it will remove that instance from the dynamic registry in that way the dynamic registry is always up to date so now think about another tricky scenario where i said that there should not be no single point of failure but you can understand that eureka server holds all the instances leads against a service logical name so it holds all the metadata about that your microservice architecture so what if if that particular eureka server goes down so if eureka server has only one instance if that eureka server goes down your whole microservice architecture will be in jeopardy so you cannot have a single instance of the eureka server that's why you need to have an multiple eureka server instance that's why eureka server itself is a microservice and it can have a multiple instances but when a eureka server has multiple instances another problems even is like that how the registry would be seen say eureka server a has most up-to-date data but if the eureka server b does not have that particular data so any point of time if eureka server a goes down then Eureka server B will provide you the inconsistent record. So to cope with this scenario, Eureka server itself clone that registry from the master service. For a given moment time, there is one master Eureka server and other act as a passive Eureka server and they clone the active Eureka server's registry to itself. So if that active Eureka server goes down, they will do a consensus among itself and choose one eureka server as a leader and that leader should have the latest state of the eureka registry so in that way a distributed way the service discovery pattern works here i am showing you how the eureka registry works so here when the eureka server goes down uh, uh, eureka servers up so it maintains a blank eureka registry now suppose there is an instance one and there is another instance instance 2 of a microservice up and running so they first they register themselves to the eureka server so now a given moment of time eureka server has a uh, two instances for a particular service now if and after a certain period of time which can be maintained in uh, a properties file or configuration file there you can send instance one and instance two sends heartbeat to eureka server to say that hey i am alive there is a th certain threshold limit so in that threshold limit if eureka server does not receive any heartbeat from instance one or instance two it treats that that particular instance is down and it removes that instance from 
Eureka Server Registry. Now I am coming to how microservice communicate with each other through Eureka Server. So say uh, to do this, the first thing will be Eureka Server should be up and running. Now when uh, Eureka Server is up and running, say there is one instance of a uh, service A is up. So next step would be it register itself with the Eureka Server. Now say there is another uh, microservice called B and its B1 instance is up. Then the next step would be it will register itself with Eureka Server. Say another instances of B is B2. It is also up. Then it also register itself with the Eureka Server. So now Eureka Servers has two microservices. One is A and B and a has one instance and B has two instances. Suppose, suppose now A wants to communicate with B. So A will send the request to Eureka server with the B's microservice logical name. Say that logical name is B. Now Eureka server search in its registry with that logical name and found that there is two instances B1 and B2 is active in that registry. So it returns you a list of active instances of service B. So that is B1 and B2. Now A's duty is to do the load balancing and pick up one instances from this instance list and then communicate with that particular microservices. So in that way Eureka servers and other microservice communicates through the Eureka server. So I hope you will like this video. If you have uh, liked this video, so please subscribe to my Ask to Shromic channel and hit the bell icon. This buy. So I will come with the next video uh, with microservice Eureka server coding. So stay tuned.